four years. Four years is the time where price and technology cross lines to give you the ultimate value for your money. And luckily for us, 2017 was one of the best years for drivers. It then drops to $300 in the first year, then drops to $250, then drops how are they selling that cheaper? What's, what's wrong with it? Oh, that is filth. That is a bar, that is. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon here, excuse the hair. First of all, lockdown, can't get a haircut. Second of all, been wearing a beanie whilst delivering all morning. Therefore, this is what we're left with. Four years old is the answer I always give you guys when you're asking me about equipment in terms of how old can I go until I start losing that performance or the forgiveness or the technology. And to be honest, you could probably go further back than four years, whereas the equipment has been pretty much similar and solid over the last eight to 10. That being said, when you're trying to correlate price versus performance, performance is always in my eyes four years until it starts flatlining i.e a driver comes out at 400 pounds or 400 dollars it then drops to 300 dollars in the first year then drops to 250 then drops to 200 and then on the fourth year it pretty much flatlines and then just slowly decreases a bit every year on year until it's 15 20 years old Therefore, in my eyes, if you had a choice between an eight-year-old driver or a four-year-old driver, and they're gonna be pretty much 20 pounds or $20 between the two of them, well, it's quite an easy decision, isn't it? So we're gonna look at the 2017 lineup. But before we do that, quickly, I know Mary's been pregnant and we've been imminent of this baby for a very long time now, but we will have this baby no matter what come this week. So if you don't see many videos from me, then apologies. The guys that have obviously subscribed to my payment account, link in description, where I've been helping them with their bags, coaching, tips, deals, one-to-one -one advice, whatever it is, I'm obviously still gonna be contacting those guys but the YouTube videos might go on hold. I don't know how much time, obviously I've had one baby before, don't know what two's like, I'm sure some of you guys will be able to let me know, but just wanna keep you guys updated, and obviously let's get straight into the video. Now here is the beauty of the internet and YouTube golf club reviews. Now I know some of you might be thinking, ah, why do we have to have golf club reviews every year? It's the same thing over and over again, and I will agree with you. However, when you can go back three, four, five, six, seven years and go, I wonder what that club was like. I wonder how this one performed versus another and the prices are exactly the same across the board where you're talking like 100 pounds for one or 120 for another. It makes a very interesting comparison when you get to look back in time. I went and checked Best Driver 2017 and we got Members Choice from Golf WRX. Great website for you golf pervs out there and I found this a very interesting read because this is people like you and me, the average golfer testing equipment and seeing which one comes out on top. We're not talking about a club fitter, we're not talking about a golf pro, we're not talking about a monster that hits it. 180 mile an hour ball speed. We are talking about Bob, Dave and Steve that's just testing equipment and going, you know what, I tried all of them and I like this one. This is why I think it's a very good review and also very interesting when we get to go on eBay to see how the prices correlate between this list and let's say the ones that weren't on this list. So let's go and have a look. I'm gonna pick my top three from this list. As I say, this information's out there, go make your own judgments and then we're gonna have a look at my top three on eBay to see exactly where they are in terms of price rankings. Cobra King LTD, I'm gonna skip past because I know there's F7 Plus, which I wanna talk about. JPX 900, second to last in the vote with only 3.2%. But, this is why Mizuno, I don't know why, just gets absolutely crucified every year when it comes to second-hand clubs. And they don't care because obviously it's retail and then obviously they're not getting anything for second-hand sales. But people just don't look for them. Don't know what it is. I've tested Mizuno golf clubs, or drivers I should say, for a very long time. I think the blue hurt them for quite a few years. Just don't think it was many people's particular taste. The faces weren't that inspiring. Potentially the sound might have let them down, but I've always thought they were quite solid. But that is my value bargain. And I want to see what you can get them for. 
as I say, four years old, what can you get the JPX 900 drivers for? Or even the ST or the GT, they're all in the same price bracket. It's incredible. The ST200 came out a year and a half ago. I've seen those listed spanking you for like 200 pounds. So whatever, Mizuno just gets done dirty when it comes to the uh, second hand market. Ping G series, 3.8%. I'm firing through my top lists here. Ping G series is my number two all round driver for you guys because it's forgiving. More forgiving than all the other clubs on this list, in my eyes. And I just feel it's classic, it's traditional, it's gonna meet a lot of your expectations. And it's just nice to see the reviews down here, just of people hitting it and trying it. I mean, I don't know how reliable Bopper 53 is in terms of a source. I'm sure he's very credible. Um, uh, but it's just nice to see average people reviewing these clubs. It just makes sense to me. And it should be done more on the year the newer stuff comes out. I don't know how feasible that is, but I think it'd be a lot more interesting. Cobra King F7 Plus. I don't have it in my list because I believe the F8 was better looking, feeling, the technology and the Arcos grip, you name it. Maybe the F7 might have had the Arcos. Maybe that was the first year it had the Arcos grip. I should know. Um, but the F8 Plus or the F8 in my eyes um, is a far superior driver. And if you had to spend £140 on an F8 and £120 on the F7, it's a no brainer to me. You go the F8. So it's not in my list. The Ping G Series LS Tech is basically guys just trying to swing there about and basically trying to give it the big end going, uh, which one do you prefer, the LS or the G Series? And they're like, oh yeah, the low spin version. Mm. Really felt that CG straight in the face. So for me, like, one out of 10 people would get on better with the LS compared to the more forgiving version. I've never used a low spinning driver in my life. I've never used a 440 head. I've never used the ones with the weights at the front because I need the forgiveness. I don't need another 20 yards. I need to find a fairway. Come on, just find me a fairway. Um, uh, so yeah. So in my, my, in my eyes, they've made um, uh, a mistake. Not a mistake, but I think it's a bit skewed. D17, D3 driver, again, that's the low spin version, wouldn't really put your head towards that. Again, Taylor made M1, the 440. In my eyes, the 2016, if you've been watching the channel, range of the M1 and M2 from Taylor made was better. It just sounded better. They tried to do this geoacoustic technology and it just, they didn't sound great. I remember getting my M1 actually, the 2017 version, and, and I just couldn't get it up in the air. D2, 917, so again, D3, I've done a video on this recently, 917 I think is a great driver and it's now in that price range. If you can get one for 100, 120 pounds, I think it's a great value driver. Um, uh, it's not gonna, and it's gonna be cheaper than your Ping G series. I just think, um, if well, if, yeah, if you can get one between like 120 to 140, it's difficult because like a year ago, this would have been cheaper than it is now but they've all, everything's inflated. But I think it's a good all-round value option, I think, from Titleist. 460 M1, you know my thoughts on it. The M2, I would recommend a lot more than the M1 for reasons stated, weights at the back, it's more forgiving. Any adjustable weighting in any driver, you lose forgiveness because they have to manipulate. There's only so much weight and so much movement they can do. So I'd always recommend non-adjustable weighting in the head, obviously hosel and shaft. Cool, Peanut191 went in on the, um, uh, cool, these guys definitely, it's like all the other ones, like, yeah, okay, I like it, and then it got to the M2, and they decided to write a novel on it. And then the top spot, and this is my top spot, so the JPX900, the value option, the Ping G series for the forgiving range, and to be honest, I probably would put the 917D2 as second, but I'm just going to put the forgiving range, Ping G series, the long ball. The one that potentially I've just kind of contradicted myself and everything that I just said, this thing's a monster. It just went so far. It just produced this high launch, low spin, and it's not gonna find you that many fairways. It's not gonna help you find fairways, but my God, it just outperformed everything that year. It was one in 10 year driver that you just get, and it just, and it just still hasn't been beaten. I. Dare I say, there's not a drive on this market, if you've got the right head and right shaft, this thing would not 
be behind. I don't care with the epic speed or the epic flash, the two predecessors, and fair play to Callaway, they found a winning ticket and they're like, you know what, let's just keep producing the same one. Obviously your Rogue and Maverick is your forgiving range because no adjustable waiting. This bad boy produces, and in my eyes, one of the best drivers in terms of just absolutely monstering one out there. And there's no surprise, 14.91% of the vote, and then 16, so over 30% of the vote through 2017, essentially was the epic. Whether it was the Sub-Zero, and of course it was the Sub-Zero that won, because people are like, oh yeah, I love the Sub-Zero. That's my list. Epic, not the Sub-Zero in my eyes, just the standard Epic. PNG Series, JPX 900. Let's see what they cost. Okay, bottom of the list, JPX 900 driver. Now I think about it, I haven't really seen many of these on the market. So straight away, this is on Golf Clubs for Cash, which is always going to be at the top, but obviously they've inspected it, they make sure it's not faulty, there's no cracks. So it's going to be at the top of the range that you could probably get this for, but they're selling one with an X-Flex. £134. I mean, that grip is very shiny. Um, uh, someone else is just trying to sling theirs in their kitchen for a bit more. See, it's interesting to me because a lot of these drivers would have been £80 to £90 last year. And you can see how much more expensive they um, are just trying to sell because there's just nothing out there at the moment because everyone's taken up the game. Okay, let's look at the sold options. This is a bit better. So, last week, Mizuno JPX 900, 86 pounds 44. In uh, pretty good condition by the looks of things. With the Tensite Orange, that won't be the tour version. 118, 120, 900. Oh, that is filth. That is a bar, that is, oh, I'm all over that. Boys, that is absolute filth of value right there. You're talking just over 50 pound a club. That is very nice, That's that excites me. Again, that's overvalued in my eyes. Someone's obviously just gone in with a punt at 300 pounds. But that's my value option, JPX 900 from the 2017 year. Let's have a look at Ping G Series. So I've seen a lot of these G Series drivers go for quite a bit of money this year. And it just shows, in my eyes, when you see a club go up in price compared to others of the same year it just shows people have faith in that particular club their friends have had it or they've tried their friends or they've seen the reviews they used to have one it broke whatever it might be and people are just looking after it supply and demand and for whatever reason they just go for more money you can see again and this is quite good from golf clubs for cash because we can get to see exact correlation of price difference between drivers of the same year. So the JPX 900 was 134 on their website. Now the 169.95, which if it's in good condition, I wouldn't say is worth it, but everything's so expensive at the moment. So for me, you should be able to get one for 100 to 140 pounds. Compared to the JPX 900, 80 to 120, if you can get one at 100 to 140, depending on condition, then uh, for me, that is a good price. See, like this one's actually in really good, is that just a massive dent in the back of the head though? Mm, that just maybe, just might be like a, that looks like an alignment stick in the back of it, that does. So again, you can see the price range of these going up and down and them holding their prices. I think the G400 at the moment is 200 pounds, so 30 pound more, you go for the G400 and they just keep coming down in price, so on and so on, or going up in price, the newer the version. So overall, that's my forgiving driver. It's obviously a lot more sought after, a lot more popular, but I do believe if you just want an all round forgiving driver, that's the one, and no matter what's come out over the last four years, you won't really beat that. Last up, the monster, the beast, that is the Great Big Bertha Epic. Now, I do find this quite interesting. Again, golf clubs for clash, clash? Golf clubs for cash coming in clutch here. Has this got a very good shaft in it, or? It's just got a standard shaft in it, 220 pounds. Now, I find this quite comical. And I'm not putting down golf clubs for cash whatsoever, but Epic Flash Driver. Oh, God, spell Simon, come on. Epic Flash Driver. 
Head only 199. Head only 199. Come on, find a full driver, buy it now price. New other, £264. So for £40 more, you can get a two-year newer version of the Epic. But this is my kind of reasoning of clubs performing well over years. How, what, how are they selling that cheaper? What's, what's wrong with it? I know it's kind of scuffed a bit, but I mean, just polish that up. That is actually cheaper then uh, what am I not seeing here? Am I missing something, guys? Am I, I'm not too sure what I'm, because normally, obviously, Epics, like Callaway, do have, like, their diamond standard, like, tour heads. Not quite sure, but as you can see, the Epic is very expensive. These are very expensive prices, though, for the Epic. I don't think they were this expensive. They're exactly the same price as the Flash, essentially. At this point, pre-owned, they're the same price. If you've got a shed full of Epics, you're winning at the moment. Cause they've, it's like they've shot up in price. Let's, let's see what they've sold for. Because I don't think they were that expensive. It kind of loses my argument of four years old being the right year to buy. Okay, this is better. This is better. Anytime, I always get excited when I see an eBay listing with no capital letters. <laughs> yeah, that's always a win. Okay, that's tiny bit. It hasn't got the original shaft. That's got a Titleist 917 shaft in it. That is with the Diamana. You should be, and again, I stress this. There's going to be a lot of people just punting prices out at the moment. £200 for this, £220 for this. That's not the real value. Go to the sold listing always and see what's recently sold. Let's go end date recent first and let's see what's sold recently. £154. This thing should be as expensive as G-Series. Now, G-Series, epic. G-Series, if you want forgiveness, £150, bam. That's your bad boy. If you want a long ball machine, you spin it too much, epic is the way to go. And potentially Sub-Zero, again, is going to reduce that spin. £150 is what you should be paying for these drivers. And as you can see here, these are all within the last couple of days, 116, 150, 120, that's what you should be paying. So guys, there you have it, four years, and you can use this in the future. So obviously in four years time, we'll be reviewing the Sim 2, the Rad Speed, the Epic Speed, whatever it might be, and you should see the same kind of devalue versus the level of performance over the duration. Guys, thank you ever so much for watching. Leave this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys later.